Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sandeep Madan and I am your anatomy teacher and I welcome all of you guys in my 15 days 15 concept series. So today is the day 7 and we are here to discuss one more concept. Uh, now dear friends, uh, for today's concept I have taken the part like which is uh, quite easy for some and quite difficult for others. But I will tell you once you have understood about it, it will become very very easy. Okay, even those who are finding it difficult but you will not be finding any difficulty in these areas. So today we are going to discuss about the parasympathetic ganglia. Okay, in the head and neck chapter we come across different parasympathetic ganglia. Okay, so let us now start here. We can see that this particular bone over here is the petrous bone and this nerve is superficial to the petrous bone. So that's why the name is greater superficial petrosal nerve. Whereas the sympathetic fibers which are going along with the internal carotid artery, they are present deep to the petrous bone because they are deep. That's why they are called as deep petrosal nerve. So greater petrosal nerve is one of the parasympathetic fiber. Deep petrosal nerve is sympathetic fiber and together they are passing through a canal. What is this canal? We can see this plate is the bony plate that is the pterygoid plate. And this is the canal within the pterygoid plate that is the pterygoid canal. Do you appreciate this? So this nerve is the nerve of pterygoid canal or you can say this is vidian nerve. And if I ask you guys dear friends that this is the pterygoid plate on one side and we can see the palate on another side between the pterygoid and the palate we have this gap which is called as fossa. What should be the name? pterygopalatine fossa and what is the ganglion present inside pterygopalatine ganglion i hope that makes sense now so in this diagram we could see that pterygopalatine ganglion is the one which is receiving the fiber from the vidian nerve but in the vidian nerve who is the parasympathetic that is greater petrosal nerve so indirectly we can say the preganglionic fibers are carried by preganglionic parasympathetic fibers are carried by the greater petrosal nerve Yes, and they will be relaying over here and after that the postganglionic fibers will be distributing in different areas. For example, nasal part, palate part and other areas as well. But here I would like to show you one very important aspect over here that this ganglion is being held by this nerve. That means this ganglion is physically supported by this nerve. The nerve which physically supports the ganglia is called as topographical nerve and the nerve which brings the preganglionic fiber is called as functional nerve. That means for all the parasympathetic ganglia we have two type of nerve one which is holding it that will be topographical and the other which is coming to work here because it is working here that is uh, why it is called as functional nerve okay and what is the work relay after relay the postganglionic fibers will be distributed. So that is about the ganglion, the concept, what is topographical, what is functional. Now let us look at these ganglia one by one. So here what you can see that we have the uh, otic ganglion. Otic ganglion is present with respect to the mandibular nerve. What is the meaning? Meaning is the mandibular nerve is holding the otic ganglion so it will be topographical. But who is bringing the preganglionic fiber? We can see here lesser petrosal nerve is bringing the preganglionic fiber. So that will be the uh, functional nerve for the otic ganglion. So we have seen the pterygopalatine ganglion. We have seen the otic ganglion. What else? Here we can see the ciliary ganglion which is actually held by the nasociliary nerves. Okay, And this nasociliary nerve is uh, holding it and it is also carrying uh, the postganglionic fibers. But what about the preganglionic fiber? Preganglionic fibers they come from the adanger westphal nucleus and from here they will be traveling along the nerve to inferior oblique and then they will be relaying over here and after the relay the short ciliary nerves will be carrying the uh, postganglionic fibers that is the uh, arrangement of the ciliary ganglion correct now let us look at one more part over here that is about the submandibular ganglion now we know there is a nerve called as lingual nerve as the name says lingual nerve is going up to the tongue region correct but on its way it is holding one ganglion so submandibular ganglion is being held. Now if I ask you lingual nerve is what 
like it is dash for sub mandibular ganglion what is your answer is it the topographical or the functional because it is holding it should be topographical that's okay then who is the functional nerve the one which is bringing the preganglionic fibers for the relay and we can see the coda tympani nerve is coming for the relay do you appreciate because lingual nerve is simply holding it and the coda tympani is relaying over here and after the relay the fibers are going to the sublingual gland and the sub uh, mandibular gland so that means if we summarize and if we make a collection right just of the thing we can say we have these uh, like one by one we can starting from the nucleus up to the target tissue so from this redinger westphal nucleus we have the nerve to inferior oblique which is relaying the fibers in the ciliary ganglion which is being held by the nasociliary uh, nerve that is the topographical and what is the target tissue ciliaris muscle and the sphincter pupillae i hope now it is clear in your mind because we have just now seen the diagram and we have understood what is the topographical meaning is who is holding the ganglion and what is the functional the meaning is who is bringing the preganglionic fibers okay now the lacrimal nucleus will send the fibers along greater petrosal nerve and in bracket we have written seven means it is a branch of seventh nerve so the greater petrosal nerve is carrying what type of fibers lacrimatory fibers which ganglion it will be coming to the pterygo palatine ganglion and it is held by maxillary nerve so this is where we started our discussion you remember maxillary nerve was holding the ganglion now what was the target issue because the lacrimal nucleus is the one who is sending the fibers most important is the lacrimal gland along with that we have the nasal pharyngeal palate those regions are also there but most important this particular pathway can be called as lacrimal pathway then we have superior salivary nucleus fibers from them will come along the coda tympani which will relay in the sub mandibular and few moments back i have asked you the question that lingual nerve is related to the ganglion what is the lingual nerve here that is the topographical but the target tissue is sub mandibular and sublingual gland last inferior salivary nucleus and the lesser petrosal nerve lesser petrosal nerve is related to the otic ganglion which is held by mandibular nerve and what is the gland here parotid so something interesting here i would like to discuss look at the position of the parotid and the submandibular who is above that is parotid parotid is superior in position but look at that nucleus parotid nucleus is inferior and what about submandibular it is inferior in position but what about the nucleus superior so it is just the other way around but let us sometime you see uh, this greater petrosal lesser petrosal when the students come across these terms like sometime it might happen you might get confused so to avoid the confusion let us look at them individually greater petrosal nerve in very simple words it is carrying the fibers for lacrimation lesser petrosal nerve again in very simple words carrying the fibers for salivation from which gland parotid why we are talking about the gland because salivation ke liye we have different glands right coda tympani is carrying the fiber for salivation from submandibular as well as the sublingual gland but coda tympani has got one more role yes it is having it is delivering the salivary fiber but it is picking the taste sensation from anterior to third of tongue right i hope now this ganglia they make some sense the topographical the functional i will suggest you make you watch the video again if required but try to make the table yourself okay once you do so it will be crystal clear to you and you will never forget these parasympathetic pathways but they are kind of the areas from where a lot of questions are asked in our exam okay so thank you so much everyone keep on uh, learning new concepts with me all right take care thank you so much bye bye